What's up guys, welcome back to the course. In this video, I'm going to explain briefly how prompt engineering actually works. So as you guys can see, uh, we're going to use this uh, cool illustration. So if you want to learn more, just click on this link. It will take you to this cool website it's called unite.ai. And if you have time, you might want to um, read these descriptions. They have very um, comprehensive explanations about how uh, prompt engineering works. And they have very cool uh, diagram, cool flowchart that so will help you a lot to understand the concept. So yeah, I'm just gonna close this tab and I'll go to this whiteboard. I'm going to make this image a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Just gonna close this ads, kind of annoying. All right, so here we go. I'm just gonna grab my pencil. As you guys can see here, uh, we have the language model. So this is our chat GPT, all right? So mm -hmm. this circle, represents chat gpt all right so i'm sorry if my handwriting looks kind of weird i'm not really used to this whiteboard to be honest with you and the data set that is being used by chat gpt is the pre-trained data set and the model is gpt4 right gpt4 let me write that down first gpt4 here we go okay cool so as you guys can see here um to initialize the conversations the user needs to enter the prompt right so this is just an example hey this is a conversation between a customer and a polite helpful customer service agency right and the input indicator is simply just a specifications about uh, what type of uh, questions what type of input uh, this is for example like okay questions of the customers all right so yeah um so the first thing when the user enter this prompt, it will be taken to this model and that's usually called a context analysis. So this is the step where ChatGPT processes the user input to understand the provided context, identifying important tokens and comprehending the overall meaning and intent behind the text. All right, so that's like the very first step. Then the next step is going to be computations and knowledge integrations. So the model, uh, which is GPT-4 in this case, performs complex computations on the analyzed context, leveraging its knowledge base acquired during training. And it combines its understandings of grammar, language patterns, and accumulated information to generate response that aligns with the given input, which is this input, right? Yeah, then the next step is response generation, which is the last step of this process where ChatGPT is going to generate you the output, all right? So through the analysis of context and integration of knowledge, ChatGPT is able to provide you with the relevant output uh, based on whatever input uh, given by the user. So yeah, guys, that's how it works. Um, obviously, I don't want to be very technical here because um, some of you, or maybe most of you, are not coming from technical background, right? So I'm just gonna explain it in non-technical language and make it easier to understand. All right, so I think that's it. That's all you need to know about how um, prompt engineering works, especially like ChatGPT prompt engineering. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to balance specificity and generality when it comes to prompt. We're going to talk about how to balance from specificity and generality, all right? So we're going to talk about pros and cons of having a prom that is too specific and a prom that is too general or too broad, all right? So uh, let's start with prom that is too specific. Obviously, uh, there are pros and cons. So when it comes to the positive things of having specific prom, it can lead to highly precise responses that directly address the desired information or task minimizing the ambiguity right and another positive thing is control so like you have more authority over um, the generated output so a specific prompt provides more control over the output allowing prompt engineers to guide the model's behavior and generate responses according to predefined uh, criteria right but obviously uh, there is nothing perfect right so um, specific prompts have these two pros but also has um, a negative thing too so if you have two specific prompt 
actually it may restrict the model's ability to generate creative or alternative responses beyond the given instructions right so if you are expecting chat gpt to generate you um you know creative output then obviously you don't want to have very specific prompts because you're going to limit you're going to put limitations on the ai creativity in this case and let's talk about a general prompt so if your prompt is too general um it will allow the model to exhibit more creativity and explore various possibilities leading to potential innovative or unexpected responses so those are definitely good thing to have right however um there are also uh, cons too when it comes to general prompts so the first one is ambiguity all right so general prompts may lead to ambiguous or unclear instructions resulting in responses that like focus or fail to address the intended task or equations and also lack of precision so general prompts can generate responses that are too broad or not specific enough potentially providing the incomplete or inaccurate information so let's play around with chat gpt this time to see um what is the actual effect of having two uh general or two broad prompts so let's say we want chat gpt to generate a story about historical events in world war ii but actually we want to specifically um get the story of um the battle in iwo jima just an example right S however if we type our prompt to be like too broad too general let's see we just uh create our prompt like this generate me story of world war ii that's it this is too general this is too broad and guess what ChatGPT is going to generate us like the main storyline of world war ii that's it ChatGPT is not going to specify um okay so what's happening in the battle of iwo jima something like that no right because ChatGPT is only going to generate you um what you're asking so if you want specifically um to get the story of battle of iwo jima then you need to specify it in the prompt so generate me so this time we're going to rewrite the prompt but in a more specific way um clearly telling chat gpt what we want right Let's generate me the story generate me uh the historical events and iwo jima right the battle of iwo jima see as you guys can see if we are being specific chat gpt is going to generate us like what we want right so that's the reason why we need to be more specific but also at the same time you need to keep this in mind if your prompt is too specific then most likely you're going to put limitations on chat gpt creativity right so just make sure you keep that in mind so let's go back to our slide then the follow-up question will be how to know if my prompt is specific enough but not too specific right because if your prompt is too specific you're going to limit chat gpt creativity but at the same time if your prompt is too general too broad then you're going to uh, cause ambiguity right so how to know well there is no exact answer to that questions unfortunately but actually um it's going to be dependent on your case right on what you're looking for on what you're trying to um trying to do right on what answers that you're trying to get from chat gpt right every case has different um situations every case has you know different approach so i cannot really say there is like one standard rule that can be applied to like all cases so the more we practice um the more you're going to get used to it right so